And finally, after months working on this track, it's time to master it. And today we're going to master the song twice. I'm going to show you my preferred chain of plugins for the in the box mix, where we're going to master it in the box as well. But for the out of the box mix, I'm going to master it outside of the box with the hardware output effects processors. I've been mastering music for a long time, ever since the mid-90s. I've mastered for CD, I've mastered for vinyl and a lot of other formats as well. I've done this a lot. And let me tell you, when I compare my mixes, my masters, to um, music mastered by the big professional mastering houses, well, I almost always prefer my own masters. That's why I've always mastered my own music and I've mastered music for a lot of clients as well. I think my master sounds really good in all honesty. And uh, whether or not you're gonna like the out of the box master more than the in the box master, well, that's up to you. They will definitely sound different. So uh, let's go and see where we end up. So now we're doing the mastering of this song outside of the box. This is one of the two different ways I master songs. So let's take a look at this uh, out of the box mastering session first. I'm only using two different hardware boxes for effects processing uh, in this session. And I'm using this IGS rubber band mastering EQ. Uh, this might seem like a Pultec clone and it operates like one of those classic Pultec EQs. Uh, but it doesn't have any tubes inside, so it doesn't sound exactly like that. But it sounds fantastic as a mastering EQ or as a last EQ in a chain. So we're going to use that. Uh, let me bypass that for now. And I'm also going to use this Expressor 500. A compressor from Elysia. So these two uh, units are patched into my patch bay and I'm using these now on my master output of the SSL which are fed the, um, the stems from my uh, mixing session shown previously. And if you take a look in the door here you can see that from the stem uh, mixes I uh, mixed down in the mixing session uh, in the previous videos done on the SSL and the um, different uh, hardware effects processors. I have the bass, I have the drums, I have the guitars, I have the synths and I have the vocals. And uh, this is what I do if I master my own stuff. I mix it down to stems because that gives me a little bit of leeway now uh, in the final mastering to do uh, some final balan balancing adjustments. So I've uh, set up the bass, drums, guitars, synths and vocals uh, with a slightly adjustment from what I did when I actually mixed it. And now I think I have the perfect uh, mix to sort of a, a mixing session number two to master down through these two last effect boxes. So let's have a listen without these two boxes engaged. I'm going to take this insert button off and that will bypass both of these two units. Okay, so let's engage the compressor here. I'm gonna turn this on. And this is still off uh, right here, so you won't hear that uh, yet. Can I go back? Can I go back in time? So you can see it takes a little bit here. I wanted more. I wanted to say so much. I wonder why we. When I adjust the threshold, it'll start to pump more and I don't want any pump here. I just want it to use, uh, to act as a part compressor, part limiter, but I don't want any pumping in the, in the master, of course. I The attack and release are set uh, exactly as I had on the bus compressor. I have a uh, slow attack, the slowest I can get, and a fast release, the fastest release this um, compressor will give me. One call, the sound of 
This is of course all adjusted to taste. There are no hard rules here. What sounds good, sounds good. So that's the compressor. I might adjust this a little bit as we go along. And now let's engage that um, rubber bands EQ from IGS Audio here and see what that does. First, I'm gonna play, uh, play without it and I'm gonna turn this knob here and you'll hear the settings I've set up that I think sounds good uh, for this particular song. If you take a look at these four knobs here, this makes it possible to uh, attenuate or turn down uh, in so and so many dBs, uh, in so and so in terms of frequency range. While these two here do the exact opposite, you can set the frequency range and how much you want to boost those frequencies. The same here for the low end, you can uh, attenuate or turn up the different uh, frequency bands all at the same time. And this is how the old the Pultec EQs worked. You could uh, adjust on the same band at the same time. You could uh, lower the dBs in one band while simultaneously uh, raise the dBs at the same frequency band. Or you can vary the frequencies for the, for the high and top end or, um, or vice versa. While this knob in the, in the middle here sort of uh, adjusts the, 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 the crossover frequency or the, the breaking point. So uh, what this does is I can use these uh, at the lower bands to tighten up the bass and raise the bass or lower the bass. And I can do the same on the top here and adjust the, um, the top end to give it a, a sort of um, shine or sheen that makes everything sound more ready, more record uh, ready. Uh, that's the term we used in the, um, in the 80s. So let me adjust a little bit here to show you how this works. bass here, I can uh, make this sound really wooly. Turn off the bass. So these are both set at 60 hertz now, so I can boost at 60 hertz and I can take away at 60 hertz. And I can do the same at the top end here. So this is now set to uh, attenuate at 20 kilohertz. And this is set to uh, 12 kilohertz, so I can attenuate here and I can boost here. So let me turn off the EQ and the compressor uh, at the same time. I wonder why we didn't make it back in 84. I wonder why. Now I wonder. Let's have the score.
So now it's just a matter of adjusting things uh, so it sounds good, it sounds nice, it sounds like the right settings for this particular song. And I will just run through uh, the mix in one pass. And that's the master of, uh, of this song. And when this is done, I'll import this file into uh, WaveLab and I'll uh, make the fade-ins and the fade-outs and I'll save it and it's all done. Now, if I receive a file from a client to master, if it's just a stereo mix, then I might do this uh, process the same way or I might do it in the box. It all depends on what sound the client is going for or if I'm giving, given free reigns, what I think is best for the song. When I mix and master my own songs, I try to mix down into stems and do the mastering like I showed you right now. And here we are in WaveLab, which I'm going to use to master this track in the box. And um, I have my list of plugins here, so you can see what those plugins are right now, but I'll go through them one by one and bringing them out into this window so you can see the settings I'll apply. I'm going to bypass these for now. And I'm not going to do any uh, fade-ins or fade-outs until I've rendered the file with the different plugins. And I can see one thing straight away that I have to fix. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can see it straight away. And that is, I have this little peak here, which will probably mess up a lot of the um, compressors you, uh, I'm, I'm gonna use. So I have to fix that straight away. So let's uh, zoom in to this uh, peak here. So what I usually do, let me zoom in even more. I'll uh, just hone in on that right there. So what I'll do is I'll um, I'll just take a little bit of that waveform, uh, a little before and a little uh, behind, and I'm just going to change the gain setting for that slightly. Let's go for uh, three and a half dBs, and I'll apply that and that'll bring it in line with the other peaks here, sort of. That's all I have to do with that one. And now I can just save that file so I don't have to do that again later. If, um, if I find out that the session is going, uh, going in the wrong direction and I want to start over, I don't have to change that uh, peak again. So the file is now saved with that peak gone. So now I can start applying uh, the different plugins. Let's just let, let's just hear a little bit of the of the unmastered uh, version here. Can I have one more so you can see the um, the track ends up around here at minus six dBs here in the master output. So my goal is to raise it a little bit without uh, destroying the dynamics and I'm just going to enhance it here and there. Uh, unlike uh, the out of the box version, uh, which I mastered previously, as you saw, I'm going to use more plugins here th than I used the outboard processing. So this is uh, in essential a different mix and it will, will be a different master as well. If this is going to sound better or worse, it's not, the, um, it's not the point here. It will sound different. So let's see what we're going to do. And the first plugin I'm uh, going to apply here is uh, the A1 Stereo Control by Alex Hilton. This has been out for many years now, I think. It's totally free or it used to be free. I don't know right now. But I live by it. I always have it as my first plugin in the chain. And it's only doing one thing, and that is to um, make everything below, in my case, 110 hertz, and make that in mono. So the kick drum and the bass sounds and a little bit of uh, other uh, instruments doing uh, low frequencies uh, will just uh, go on in mono from, uh, from this point on. It's called safe bass. So let's go for the next one that will make a big impact on the sound and that's the Waves Linear Multiband Limiter. So let's drag that in here. 
and I have a uh, custom made preset here which I made for my uh, song Electric Rain but it's a good starting point for any kind of uh, 80s uh, pop song which I'm working on here so let's um, check it out So what this is basically doing is um, adjusting four different bands in the spectrum and I've just tailored these to suit the song, uh, made adjustments to the threshold and gain and range etc for each of these um, bands uh, and this has to be uh, adjusted for, uh, for every song you're working on but this is a great starting point I think for the, for the mixes I'm going for when I'm doing things in the box. So uh, that's uh, one of the major plugins in this chain that will make a big impact to the final sound. So that's that. After that I have a uh, little bit of uh, EQ from the um, Pultec clone here. I'm boosting a little bit of 12 kilohertz, but I'm also taking down a little bit of 20 kilohertz. So let's uh, check out how that sounds. So we're not, it's not doing all that much, but it gives a little bit of shine and it also takes away a little bit of the most um, dominant high frequencies. So it's just something I like to have in that chain right after the multiband limiting or compression. So I have that uh, doing that. I'm not doing anything with the, with the bass frequencies at all with this plugin. And after that one, we have the regular Q10 uh, equalizer. Uh, I'm uh, rolling off everything. Uh, well, it starts around 70 or 80 uh, hertz. Although the frequency here is set at 41, I have a Q factor of, uh, of around three, which makes it roll off everything. And that's essential to me to get that classic 80s vinyl mastering sound. You simply cannot have too much bass low frequencies in the master if you're going for that 80s master because it was ultimately meant to be delivered onto vinyl. And as you know, vinyl couldn't handle all that much bass low end so you had to roll off to get your um, mixes to sound louder on vinyl and so that's what I'm going for and that's basically why my mixes sounds different than 99% of all uh, so-called synthwave out there because modern synthwave is really nothing else than EDM with a 80s flavor. Uh, they use way too much bass to sound authentic. Nothing, nothing is wrong with doing EDM with, um, with 80s flavor if, if that's what you want to do, but it doesn't sound like we did in the 80s and that's the sound I'm going for. So because of that I have to do some adjustments to the low end uh, because I want this to sound as it would have sounded uh, coming out on vinyl. So that's why I roll off so much uh, starting around 80 hertz with that Q point and the, and the um, reference frequency set at 41 or around there. I'll adjust this from song to song as well. So that's the Q10. And I also have a um, uh, another Waves plugin here called Center and that basically just uh, works that I can adjust uh, the center frequencies and the side frequencies so I can just mix these up against each other. So I always take the sides down a little bit to get a little bit more focus on the vocals and things in the middle of the mix. Let's uh, check it out. Pick up the phone with a smile. I wonder if we're gonna make it. 
So with the sides uh, pulled down a little bit, I get a little bit more focus on the vocals and the, and the center frequencies, uh, just as I like it. This might also be adjusted to taste if I find that my mixes was um, if my mixes were too center oriented or uh, too sides oriented, I can adjust these to taste to just uh, to hone in on the on the perfect mix uh, in my ears, anyways. So that's the waves center. And finally, we have the limiting, and this is where it's very important and to not go overboard. And uh, here it is, the L2 Ultra Maximizer. I'm not using any dithering here because this is going to be a, a output in 24 bits. So dithering is only used if you're gonna if you were gonna master this down to uh, say put it out on a CD, you would have to dither this down to 16 bits. I'm not concerned with that here. This is never gonna reach a CD in that sense. And the output ceiling is something that's um, remained from my CD mastering days. Uh, back in the day, where you would always master to CD with a output ceiling of minus. 0.2 or minus 0.5, so you wouldn't clip anything in the in the internal electronics, the converters of the CD when it was playing back that CD. Uh, so uh, that stuck with me. So I always put that on 0.2, minus 0.2, and now I'll just adjust the threshold uh, to the point where I see only the slightest uh, attenuation uh, in the meter here when I reach the highest points uh, of my mix. So let's check it out. So you could uh, hear the mix grew larger and larger in volume. Uh, the meter here was uh, reaching 0 dB here. I'm gonna cut this back a little bit to around minus 5 or maybe even minus 4.5. One thing that a lot of people are concerned with if you check out other mastering tutorials online, etc., is the level of your masters, the output level of the music of your masters. Everything has to be tailored to the specs of the digital platforms, they say. I'm not very concerned about that, really. I master my music with a output level I think sounds nice, that doesn't clip, and that has a lot of dynamics to it. To me, the end user can always turn up or turn down the volume of the delivery device of his choosing. So when it comes to all these mantras that you shouldn't master higher than minus 14 on the LUFS scale or RMS or you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that, well, I'm not overly concerned. I master my music so it sounds good, and that's the end of it. So uh, let's set this on minus 4.5 in the, in the limiter here now. And uh, what I'll do now is listen back and forth, maybe adjust a couple of settings here and there. And when I'm done, I press render and check out now how the file will look. So what I'm seeing here now is a uh, mix or a master that still has a lot of dynamics. It's not clipping anywhere in the high peaks here. And uh, I can definitely live with this. However, I think I will um, undo that and do it one more time. But this time I'm gonna lower this even more because I want a little less uh, limiting on this than I could see from the waveforms here. So let's do that one more time, render that. 
and uh, let's uh, do its thing. Like this. So I can put this out of the way and it's on bypass and let's uh, check it out now. Okay, that's good. Now we're going to do uh, a fade in at the beginning here. Not a fade in in the music itself, but a fade in at the beginning of the waveform. So this starts right away. So there's no uh, fade in in the music as such. So what I'll do, I'll just erase everything uh, in half a second before the, the music starts. And I can see it down here. For 453 milliseconds, that's almost a half a second. So I'll do, let's say about this, this much. And I'll just erase everything uh, in front of that. And this will work. This is about half a second in, in length. And this is also something from my uh, CD mastering days. You didn't want uh, the CD players to skip the very, very beginning of each uh, new song. Therefore, you had to put in about a, ha a half a second of uh, space before each of the, of the songs, the, the waveforms, so that the CD players would not skip ahead in the beginning of each song. So I'm, I've stuck with that as well. And now I'm going to do a, um, a fade in of that uh, space, uh, empty space. So I'm going to do a fade in and I'm going to just add a little nice curve to this. So it just fades in and goes straight up bef just before the music starts. So that's a nice curve. I'm going to apply that, I close that and uh, let's start it up. That sounds nice. Let's go to the end of the song. One thing that this song uh, will not have is that long fade out that was so common in the 80s. If I were going for maximum authenticity, I would have a long fade and I certainly could do it on this song as well. But I decided to, to end this song uh, as it is right now, even though it's probably not uh, what uh, record companies would want uh, to do in the 80s, where we would always have, have the last choruses fading out or a long instrumental part fading out over time. Uh, and if that was the case, I would just um, cut out the end portion here and just find a nice spot around here and just do a um, fade out like this and apply that and you would basically have your uh, out fade. Since I'm not going for that now, I'll do it in a slightly different way, but the techniques are the same. So let's find the end point. And listening carefully, I can't hear any noise or uh, clicks or pops or uh, yeah, uh, stuff at all. So this is a, uh, I don't have to do any cleanup here. So what I'll do, I'll just uh, erase that part here and I'll just find that uh, little bit of uh, a waveform here and I'll just do something like this and apply that um, Fade out to this portion here. Fade out, 15 dBs, it's okay. Close. And now the sound will start to fade out very, very, very near the very end of the waveform here. And it'll just fade out naturally over time. And since I left a generous amount of uh, free space here, empty space, this will sound uh, nice and clean and natural. And in, uh, in a compilation or a album, etc., 
we will have plenty of time before the next song to get some sort of uh, uh, a couple of seconds to breathe before the next song comes in an album or whatever compilation this will be part of. So let's listen to this. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll erase a little bit more as well. And since this is now part of a fade out, I'll do, uh, which is cut off here now by me erasing that part, I'll do uh, a, another fade out in that uh, uh, space. So uh, to be sure it's nothing uh, unnatural sounding here. Let's check it out. And I'll really crank up the volume in my headphones when I'm listening to this to check that it's nothing there that needs uh, some sort of edit from me. I could hear a little bit of um, sound here, just very, very faint noise fading out around here, and here it's completely silent. I'm not sure if you could hear that uh, in this video on YouTube, but I could hear it and it sounds all natural. And there we have it, we're done. We have two masters, one in the box master and one out of the box master. In the next and final episode, we'll upload these masters to the digital streaming platforms, we'll make a nice cover art picture, and I'll show you some other bits and pieces that were missing from the previous nine episodes. So hope to see you in the final chapter. I'm Espencroft, thanks for watching, cheers.